following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. Hello and welcome to another edition of our program, CHW In Action, with your host, your CHW, Rafael Calderon. As you can see, this week we have a special, very special. I know that I say it's special every week because I love doing this. But this week is really, really special because we have the Natural Health Department here with us. And let us introduce our guests. So let us start from here to there. Ladies first. Thank you, Rafael. Okay. Hi, my name is Teresa Calope. I'm a public health nurse and mm. I've been working with the National Public Health for the past seven years, and I'm enjoying my job. Excellent. Hello, Rafael. I'm mm -hmm. Jackie Aguilar. I'm the Public Health Nurse Manager, and I would like to say thank you for having us here. My pleasure. It's, it's a, a great opportunity to introduce the, the Community Health Department in mm -hmm. the city of Nashua, and the whole Division of Public Health, which is doing wonderful, a wonderful job. But um, I've been at the Public Health Department for about two and a half years now. Nice. And doctor? And I'm Chuck Capetta, a pediatrician in Nashua here for the last 25 years at Dartmouth Hitchcock and a member of the uh, Board of Health of, of Nashua for the last two plus years now too. Very nice. Thank you all for being here. Okay. Thank you. I'm glad to have you guys because I do know all the great jobs that you guys do at the health department and I want the whole community to know. Not just the whole community of Nashua, the whole state of New Hampshire. Okay, so let us start by telling, can you tell us a little more about what you guys do, all the roles that you play? the missions, what do you guys do? Well, let me start by telling you that mm. we are so happy. We are the first uh, health department in, Nash in Nashua and the New Hampshire region mm. to have um, the first public health accreditation. Officially, uh, you know, accreditation by the public health mm. um, certification that is a national honor for us. Nice. Um, we are working really, really hard for our community. Um, we have different programs running and we are always welcoming more services, more programs to serve our community, um, to engage with all of the public health uh, uh, problems that are in the community. So the Division mm -hmm. of Public Health is uh, involved in almost everything that goes along uh, the problems of the community. And we prevent, we promote, and we mitigate. So basically, we're always working towards that. Um, to start, uh, I have, I manage, I'm a public health nurse manager, so I, start, um, I started two and a half years ago, mm -hmm. and I started working with this wonderful team of nurses. I have mm -hmm. uh, Teresa Calopi, Shannon Casey, uh, Kayla O'Brien, and Kathy Sir right now as nurses. And mm -hmm. then we have other wonderful nurses from the school department that come to do per diem jobs. Uh, after they work all day, they come to help us. Can you imagine that? Nice. It's wonderful. Mm. So I have Gina Lopez Carrasco and Marsha mm. Peterson, as well as Gary. Um, what is her last Morrissey. Name? Morrissey. Yeah, she just got married, but oh well, Morrissey. Um, so um, we are so happy to, to run the clinics and to have different programs. We work with uh, immunizations, and that's what we're here for today, mm -hmm. because we want to promote the national infant immunization week as well as promote the national world immunization uh, week so mm -hmm. um, but we also have other things going on like mm -hmm. uh, we work with uh, our clients on std we work with them with uh, tuberculosis case management uh, we do lead prevention mm -hmm. and screening mm -hmm. we actually do free testing for for children really uh, yes when do you do that we do at any point they want, but usually mm -hmm. we reserve Friday mornings, mm -hmm. but uh, with the van, we're mm -hmm. gonna start pulling out the van from storage because he has to, you know, the van has to be put away because of the winter. To, the winter is very harsh mm -hmm. in the van. So um, we, we're gonna put the van out pretty soon, and hopefully we can start going around the different um, apartment buildings, 
So if I, if I have, I don't mean, sorry to cut you off. If, we, if I have a parent that wants to get their, ch their child vaccinated, how do I just send them to, to you? Or? Yes, uh, have them give us a call because we're gonna be in the neighboring towns, in the neighboring apartment complexes pretty soon with the van. And we also have on Tuesday immunization clinic from three to 7 p.m. as well as uh, Friday morning from 8.30 to 10.30. We also have outreach activities, which Teresa can talk mm -hmm. about. We're doing a lot of outreach events mm -hmm. in the community. So that includes um, immunizations, TB skin testing, lead testing, mm -hmm. um, HIV we do screening, HIV, mm -hmm. hepatitis C screenings, and also uh, we do um, um, all kind of education and so you guys do a whole bunch of amazing things. That's all it is. <laughs> yes. Excellent, excellent. And doctor, tell us what you do. Tell us about you. Well, um, I help look after kids. Pediatrics is zero to 21. Mm -hmm. um, but I've been honored for the last two years to be a part of this uh, wonderful team that just really are the worker bees in the communities because we mm -hmm. live in our offices. Mm -hmm. Our old office was just behind here at Nash, in Nashua South, but now we're at exit eight. But there's different practices of pedi pediatricians all around the community and friendly practitioners who do a great job looking after families. But um, And we provide immunizations in our office. But for these guys, they're actually going to the heart of where the people are, where the people are coming locally to 18 Mulberry Street, where the offices are located. And if they can't be reached there, then the van that um, Jackie's talking about is a mobile unit that can has a, a public health nurse or, and a nurse practitioner that come and um, facilitate vaccines right, right right where they live. So mm -hmm. we're going right to the people instead of the people coming to us, which I really love. And public health is all about, just like Jackie just said, prevention, mm -hmm. anticipation, education, all these things. And they provide the, the nuts and bolts that we may not do enough of in our office, but we can rely on these guys to help carry it through. So it's really, it's really been fun to see all the depths of which they go to from providing um, Welfare, welfare um, help for parents and families who don't have homes, um, to, who don't have food, who shelter. Um, their economic situations have changed, but um, they just cover the soup to nuts. We're, we're pe people, we're not robots, and we have feelings, and they're there to, in the times of need, at the times when they're most vulnerable. Mm -hmm. So it's really just, it's been a true blessing to be a part of this group, because as a doc, you think you know it all, but I don't know anything related to what they do. You know, and I can pretend mm -hmm. to know what shots to give, but they're the ones giving the shots. <laughs> um, I work closely with the school nurses in Nashua. I've been the school physician in Nashua now for 25 years for all the Nashua public school nurses and love that group of dedicated um, individuals who just are in the trenches also, you mm -hmm. know, every day. Like Jackie said, you know, 8 to 3.30, just looking after these little pumpkins. And we all just love watching the kids grow. And when yes. they become adults, then mm -hmm. they also took care of them, which I like. And um, so... It's a wonderful team. And mm -hmm. let me tell you, Dr. Capetta is also part of our Board of Health. Mm -hmm. And he's also a very active participant of, all, uh, of our annual conferences that we started having last year. So we're mm -hmm. going to participate in the second one. We're planning a big conference. Teresa can tell you the title. It's a long title. But Dr. Capetta <laughs> is also going to be involved in that um, um, it's good collaboration. Purpose. It's really fun. Yeah. That's why I think, again, the yeah. definition of public health is all of us interacting regardless of background, regarding of culture, regarding we all have different needs and individual you mm -hmm. know, wants and whatever, but it's coming together for the benefit of people to, and an importance of we can't live in a box. Yes. We have to just, we all interact, and, um, and it's, a, it's a wonderful community to be involved in. And that's one of the reasons why one of the reasons why I love Nashua because I congratulate you for getting oh, your because you. I know all the great things that you guys do and I was so happy when you guys got that mobile unit because as a community health worker you see what I have, have found in Nashua this lovely community of ours is that there's a, you have the doctors here and you have the people with need, in need of health care sometimes there's a disconnect there, we need a bridge. So I'm sort of like a foot soldier. I go out, I find the people that need the care, and I connect them with the doctors. And once I connect them, then I can see how amazing the doctors are, and the nurses are, and the systems are. So we have an amazing system. What I want to see is, like you just said, to, for us to come together and work together, it, regardless of what, well, we all do different things, but to all come together to make, to make the community he healthier. Let's just put it that way. And for that, we need special occasions. 
an event. So that, I, that brings me to you. Okay. <laughs> so we met here today because you emailed me. Yes. You wanted to come in and talk about immunizations? Yes. Let's talk about that. Okay. Um, one of the reasons that I, I really push that, this uh, because mm -hmm. uh, we are celebrating two events this week. Mm -hmm. The first is the National Infant Immunization Week, mm -hmm. which uh, goes from April 24. Sorry, it's 22. <laughs> So okay. 29. Mm -hmm. And the other one is the World Immunization Week. So this goes from uh, April 24th to 30th. Sorry, it's a little bit, uh, th the timing is a little bit, it's almost in the same week. But uh -huh. it's like, get, because it, this one is world and the other one is here in the United States. So what happened, because I'm the immunization program coordinator nurse for the city of Nashville, our public health. So I'm the one who's looking for uh activities or event that will um, promote, encourage people to know, to learn about the importance of vaccine. Mm -hmm. And uh, we go to uh, places like last Sunday, that's the kickoff. I went to the library by myself. I and saw that picture. Yeah, I did send you uh, yeah. to my colleagues. Mm -hmm. So I did went there and put a book about um, immunization. I have a trifold and mm -hmm. I was uh, actually uh, showing this because on May 10, we're gonna have a screening of this mm -hmm. documentary. Uh, it's called Hillman Documentary. Mm -hmm. uh, he is Maurice Hillman. He's mm -hmm. a scientist that actually discovered nine out of 14 vaccines that we're currently using today. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, unfortunately, he's not that famous. <laughs> I don't even know him until I went to the conference in Manchester uh -huh. last March 22. And uh, we watched the documentary screening for one hour and seven minutes. And then I told to my manager, we really need to make this um, documentary uh, be, uh, to be shown to the resident of Nashua. What? Would he give me permission to play that on this TV show? Because I could do that. Actually, I mean, we could do that. I need uh, some time to, mm -hmm. to I, it's a process. Actually, what happened, uh, because this is really a, a great documentary. It was awarded a best documentary last year by S Cinema. I, I'm mm -hmm. not so familiar with this <laughs> with this awarding. Mm -hmm. uh, but what happened? Um, I didn't realize that uh, it needs a viewers' uh, rights to be shown to the public. Mm -hmm. It's like public viewing uh, right. permit. So it's actually the library, National Public Library, told me. Um, um, uh, Carol Amen. Yes. She's the program coordinator. I love there. Carol. Yeah, she is very, very nice. Mm -hmm. She's very much willing to help us. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, she's told me, hey, I need this permit. Mm -hmm. And so that's the delay part. And unfortunately, the producer during that time, I think I worked on this like um, last week of March. Mm -hmm. And the producer of this uh, documentary just signed up like a um, sign up a distributor contract. So right. they want us to wait a little bit and be patient, but we already have a verbal permit that this can be shown at the National Public Library. We just don't have the paper, but it's okay. on the process and they told us we can, uh, we can do the May 10. So okay. with the question, uh, we can watch it here on your TV. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna ask permission because I'm also gonna ask permission if we can donate some uh, DVD to the library so the people gonna have some access to borrow it. Because well, that's what it's for. Thank you, thank you. I'll thank be sure you. to add those pictures on in post production. Yes, thank you. So that people you. can see that, and we can get you more people to attend that. Yes, I really right. appreciate it. No <laughs> problem, you. no problem. Guys, you guys do so many amazing things. What is in the future for your collaboration? Well, we are planning the uh, second um, uh, second healthcare uh, fair, and um, Teresa had a great idea last year to mm -hmm. put all the pillars of healthcare uh, in the city of Nashville together. So we call St. Joseph Hospital, Southern New Hampshire Medical, Dartmouth Hitchcock, uh, and uh, we started collaborating. Uh, and we just designed all of a sudden uh, an immunization conference last year. We talked about lead mm -hmm. and the lead toxicity in our children, which is uh, very important to, you know, encourage the physicians to test the children one and two years old mm -hmm. because we are actually finding out that a lot of kids don't get tested. So when they don't get mm -hmm. tested, we don't know if they are becoming toxic exactly. because of lead paint. Mm -hmm. And since we have a, an old stock 
of uh, market of housing here that have led tests, you know, they were built before 1978. So mm -hmm. uh, a lot of our housing are old. In, uh, in New Hampshire, 67% of our housing are very old. Mm -hmm. So the likelihood of having lead is very high. It's possible, right? Yeah. See, that's why I got involved in the Healthy Homes program. So I'm certified to teach someone how to have a healthy home. Because I, actually in Manchester, when I went out to do Spanish medical interpreting, I found a lot of parents that were completely unaware of what was going on. And I know the city of Manchester is very good at putting out information. But like I was saying before, this, the, you need to have a foot soldier to go out and talk to people and reach out to people and, like they say, touch them where they live. Because the people that need the health care the most, they work two jobs, three jobs. They don't really have the time to go look for the services. And I know all the excellent programs that you guys offer. Because, I mean, Luis Porras and I, we stay in touch. And I see him in the community all the time. Oh, well, yeah, Luis. Excellent Lewis, guy. Yeah. Yeah. Luis is also part of my team. Mm -hmm. um, so part of my team is also Luis, which is an outreach worker. Mm -hmm. um, we are actually looking to hire another community health worker. And uh, Jamie Terra is our um, administrative assistant. She's mm -hmm. bilingual, mm -hmm. so Spanish, English, and um, Portuguese. Nice. Because we want to give back to the community and help them out to figure out all of these decisions that they, they got to make mm -hmm. for healthcare. And um, we also have uh, uh, Jessica Gordon, our program assistant in, mm -hmm. uh, in the community health department. And, and how is Lisa Vasquez doing? Lisa Vasquez is mm -hmm. a part of the community services mm -hmm. on their. Um, direction of Bobby Bagley, our director, mm -hmm. and uh, Bobby manages the whole public health department, but Teresa is uh, doing this uh, substance misuse coordination, mm -hmm. and, and she's amazing. So Yes, I agree. We, uh, we enjoy having Lisa, and then there is also the emergency preparedness section, as mm -hmm. well as um, um, just the continuum of care coordination. Uh, Patty Cooker is there, and... Um, we're we're actually hiring a continuum of care coordinator right now, um, but in the process of getting more people. And Chelsea, St. George's, our emergency preparedness, and then we have the environmental health department, which they do amazing things. Yes, to make sure that our restaurants are safe, mm -hmm. that our pools are safe, schools are safe from lead. Mm -hmm. They do lead testing in water. Mm -hmm. uh, they do, you know, pool testing, lead testing. They take care of the rabies animals mm -hmm. they, they do amazing job they amazing do. job so yeah. and uh heidi pick is the director over there mm -hmm. she's um, um uh, the health officer and then we have ren uh, bodern and and the rest of the staff which they are amazing at, at you, the job you know how i know you're a good leader because you know all your people <laughs> that's amazing, <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> And I, wanted, yeah, I want to commend great. the environmental health department because when I wanted to, I wanted to do a farmer's market in Nashua because we have a wonderful farmer's market in downtown Nashua. I had this idea of having a second one for people that couldn't make it to the one in downtown, and that's a whole story for another time. But the point being is that the department was very, very, the environmental health department was very, very helpful for me to, for, to get things in time because I wanted to start this thing. You know, farmer's market, they have a time frame. And I wanted to do mine in the middle of the season. And everybody told me it's impossible. It takes about a year to get those things going. But you guys know me. I'm like highly energetic. Yes. So, <laughs> so I got it done, but I could have not been able, have been able to open it without the natural health department. So I thank you guys for all that you do. Okay. Now, I have my orders from Teresa, and I have to read these questions. We've touched on all of them pretty much. But I have one for Dr. Capera, and it's how important are vaccines? As a pediatrician, how do you deal with parents that are against vaccines? Well, I think I speak for the group uh, that as healthcare workers and healthcare providers, vaccines ultimately for me personally too is the number one thing we can do to keep our families and kids safe mm -hmm. um, from disease and illness. Um, and we have um, come so far from before 1940 when vaccines were discovered Mm -hmm. uh, we had whole generations die of diseases that are now, you know, less so. Mm -hmm. From measles, mumps, rubella, polio, smallpox, um, a whole list of things. Um, so we have come so far in technology to be able to um, thwart our own health, personally and community-wise, with these drugs that protect us against them, from which they die. And so we have, uh, which is all wonderful. However, there is a growing population mm -hmm. of 
parents and individuals who, in a live free and die state, feel that vaccines somehow are not good. Mm. Um, and I spend my waking day every day saying vaccines are really the only, the father for two, I'd say I would give every, every vaccine to my child and our children every time, every, every way, because if, if it can help them be well, be, you know, ultimately not die, um, be less sick, et cetera, that's the one thing I can do as a parent. So mm -hmm. when I'm faced with parents who say Dr. Chuck, because um, it rhymes with Dr. Duck, I quack a lot, I will have a lot of bad jokes. Um, <laughs> but this is not a joking matter for me, immunization-wise. It's really I take this to heart and say, I, when they say, I think, let's try either an alternative schedule to vaccines or let's maybe postpone them because I've read on the internet, which is not a good source of um, medical information, that somehow we're going to, something's going to happen. And I looked, this is when I, my usual jovial self just turns very serious and says, mm -hmm. sorry, that's just misinformation. You know, and that um, vaccines did used to have lead in them, sorry, mercury, mm -hmm. um, because it was a preservative mm -hmm. that was there to take from the factory where they're produced to the mm -hmm. locations such as our offices and clinics. Um, they're no longer in there, so they're perfectly safe from a preservative perspective. But more importantly, they are there to just produce an antibody response in the, in the child, mm -hmm. which is like the policeman. They want the policeman inside us to get ready for the battle. Okay. So if we're ever, ever being, going to see the, the bad guys on the streets, these, these um, cops inside, the immune cells, will fight them off. And um, that's what their role of vaccines is, to protect us internally. So parents have now seen that maybe we shouldn't give these vaccines, so they're not giving them to their children, which individually is potentially their right, or mm -hmm. is their right, not potentially. But ultimately for us, it produces a potential risk because vaccines, often many vaccines work by what we call herd immunity, mm -hmm. where we benefit from individually, each of us getting vaccines. So it produces reactions in all of our bodies to say, okay, I remember that, that bad guy, I'm gonna put, Increase the police patrol inside, make sure that nothing ever attacks us, mm -hmm. and if that makes sense. So well, that's what our role is, to continue to booster our, our defenses against these illnesses that continue to attack us. But if more and more don't take us, then it's like anything else. It's a re revolution that takes over, and then we're at risk of things that our grandparents and grandparents and grandparents before us you know, didn't have the ability to, to live. I completely get that. Thank you for that very detailed answer. Sorry, it's a little detailed, but yeah, so. <laughs> no, no, it was good. That's what we wanted. Yeah. We want the people to be educated. So uh -huh. it just is, it's really, it's, it, it goes to the heart of everything we do. Mm -hmm. we, yes, all the other things we do are secondary to making sure not only kids are healthy, but adults, you know, mm -hmm. vaccines for, you know, there's now shingles against me, against chicken pox when you're an adult. There's pneuma, pneumovax, which is against um, forms of meningitis, um, pneumonia, mm -hmm. in adults that we should do. Um, all these things, so we can't let our guard down. Even when I, my pediatric patients mature and grow into family practice patients, mm -hmm. I, I need them and our colleagues to just continue to offer these shots to say, hey, we have a wonderful life, we have one shot to do it, mm -hmm. let's make sure the healthiest we can be. Let's make it count. Let's make it count, yeah? sure. I'm gonna go off script. Yes. I wanna ask each one of you, your title again, and why you chose this profession and what motivates you to get up every morning and do what you do. Let's start with you because you're closer to me. Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, to begin with, uh, actually I did not really uh, uh, pick up the cars that I got, nursing. Mm. <laughs> but uh, unfortunately I fall in love with my uh, work. That's why I'm still here. I've been working as a nurse since way back in 2007 here in the United States, but also in the Philippines. I only worked there one year. But um, it's actually my sister who kind of forced me to go into nursing because before mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to be in a computer ward because it's just booming. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's good that I follow my sister because uh, we always follow our elder, always. elder sister. So uh, mm -hmm. I go into nursing and graduated in the Philippines. I migrate in 2005 and uh, continue what. Um, I was uh, tasked to do so. I think it's a calling for me. <laughs> I, uh, it's a, I, I know about callings. Yes. So what, what motivates you to do it? Yeah, um, uh, I started first as a LNA, li uh, licensed nursing assistant in, in HUC at Southern New Hampshire Medical Center. And then mm -hmm. after I passed my board exam because I studied in the Philippines, I need to take some um, 
exams, and then when I passed it, I immediately went to go to work at Greenbrier for two and a half years. And then from there, I applied at public health nurse. It's a long story, but when I got into public health nurse, it's like connected to each other. Oh, wow, I wanted to work Monday to Friday mm -hmm. and 8 to 5, like working 9 to 5, <laughs> and occasional mm -hmm. weekend. And it goes well. I love public health nurse. I like working, serving with people. Mm -hmm. And um, even in Greenbrier, uh, I like work working with elderly population, and it's more on serving, especially with mm -hmm. public health, we do a lot of uh, outreach works, and that's what, uh, it's it's fulfilling to help other people, connect people yes. with the uh, resources that they needed. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. Yeah. <laughs> and Teresa is one of the most, just friendliest per person you ever want to meet. She always mm -hmm. has a All smile. Right. She's Thank always you. so bubbly, <laughs> and this is, her personality is living right here. It's so fun oh, to see yeah. her because you just want to help her because she, she's so helpful with everybody. I That's agree right? with you. You know how we met? I used to teach this healthy class. It was a healthy heart class, and I needed a nurse to take the blood pressures, and she really wanted to help, and that's how I met Jackie because I, yeah. I was after Jackie oh. to allow her to do it. <laughs> she really wanted to help. Oh, so thank you. I agree with you. <laughs> Awesome so lady, awesome. Yeah. young lady. Yeah, everybody's awesome here. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And Jackie, tell us who you are and what motivates you to do what you do. All right. Uh, so I'm a public health nurse manager for the mm -hmm. uh, community health department. And I, like I said before, I've been there two and a half years. But I have, I'm not new to public health. I've been doing public health for 25 years mm -hmm. uh, or more. Uh, my uh, initial um, career um, led me to be a public health nurse since I was a kid because my mother was a public health nurse. So back then when we had the polio vaccine, that was a little drink. I used to help I remember her. That. I remember that. <laughs> I remember yeah. that. I used to go to the mountains of Nicaragua and help her because wow. to me that was awesome. How can you not help the kids not mm -hmm. get sick, you know? So my mother used to go on a trip that only crossed mountains and rivers and we ended up at unknown areas, wow. <laughs> you know, no, there were no roads. You made the roads and mm -hmm. we brought the vaccine so the kids will be safe. So basically that's how I started. Mm -hmm. So I followed my mother's footsteps. I became a public health nurse and uh, I loved it since day one. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, not only giving back to the community, but connecting, like you said, connecting them to resources, mm -hmm. um, just uh, creating programs. I, I am so happy to tell you that uh, we just got the okay to start an asthma program for kids in the city of Nashville. Congratulations. Thank you. So we're going to start connecting kids that are having difficulty with asthma and mm. doing home visits. Maybe, you know, having a nurse, a community health worker start working with the kids. Right, right. That way we can uh, not only go over medications, maybe asthma plans. And, but also uh, connecting um, them to the environmental health so we can all together find out what are the risk, what are the environmental risk that they're mm -hmm. going through. So that's a project that I, when I um, found out that Manchester has been having it for a long, long time, mm -hmm. I talked to the nurses in Manchester and I said, why can't we have this in Nashua? Mm -hmm. There are kids everywhere in Nashua that needs Indeed. this. Yeah. So um, I was so happy that the HHS got us a little money, so we, we are in, um, in the first phase, you know, trying to get a community health worker to work mm -hmm. with us and start the program. So mm -hmm. we're all excited about it. I, I'm excited that you guys are doing it. You know, when you're having fun, you forget about time. Yeah. We have about one minute left. So I want you to tell me quickly what your, what, what your passion is, and then we'll go to the doctor. Okay. My passion, my yes, passion yes. is to, just to help the community. I, I uh, mean, like I said, love helping the community, love helping to, to do prevention because mm -hmm. public health is prevention. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's if, if prevention is not done, a lot of things happen. Yes. And uh, I know in, commun in communicable disease, we, saw, we see a lot of emerging diseases. So mm -hmm. if we don't prevent them, we're going to have them build up to a point where we're not, we're not going to be able to control them. And it's better so. to prevent than to lament. Yes, I So, okay. <laughs> so, thank you. <laughs> okay. Well, um, so I got into pediatrics because um, actually through college, uh, my, my father was an orthodontist in Chelmsford, Mass., and I actually mm -hmm. always wanted to be an orthodontist until I met a pediatrician down in Cambridge, Mass., 
and just met her in the emergency room at Mass General and Cambridge City Hospital, and just the way her passion for kids and her empathy for kids was just really awe-inspiring. And so um, it, from that sort of led to where I'm at here. And, um, and again, similar to my wonderful friends here, it's, it's the passion for me comes from kids and continuity of care, like you do, Raphael, when you see it in the community. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think we're all just community workers that, you know, like you said, you're going, you're to the worker bees that actually go to the house, um, and I and you give me directions on how to go to the house, but I just love seeing them every day in their lives. And that's why personally I spend a lot of time in the communities mm -hmm. and just talking about education, and this is the only body we have. You can't go to a either department store and get a new one, so... Let's make sure it's disease-free from vaccine. Make sure we, like a car, you know, eat right. Make sure we sleep well. We fill it up with proper gas of good nutrition. Um, you laugh at my bad jokes. Things like that that I like to say in the schools. Um, is And just see the smiles on their faces is just so fun. Um, and walking in their shoes and um, understanding that it takes two bus rides to get to my office or mm -hmm. this kind of stuff that I think sometimes if we're stuck in our office, it's um, you forget. But watching them grow up from zero to 21, small babies, now big babies. I get to mm -hmm. hand them over, but it's just really being a part. I'm honored to be part of their lives while they're doing that. Excellent. See, I can see your passion. And I'm honored to have you all here. Thank you so much thank for giving you me your time. Hell. This has been fun. Yeah. Okay. And I thank you, the audience, for watching us. And I'm hoping you got to see why I love this department, the National Health Department. They do amazing things. So I thank them, and the community thanks them. So thank you for giving us some of your time. We appreciate it. My name is Rafael Calderon. I'm your CHW. Have a good night. God bless. Good night. Good night. Thank, you. thank you. program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters.